Welcome to the United Methodist Church. We're so happy that you all are here, and we are happy that our viewing public at home can now um, watch us while we're having church right here. They don't have to wait until Sunday night or Monday. So we are welcoming to our, our um, YouTube viewers also. Just a few announcements. Mostly is um, we're having breakfast on Tuesday, 7.30 to 10. And right after that, Doug will lead us in Bible study. And we're going to learn about the history of Jerusalem um, this week. So we'd love to have you all come. It's a really good group. Doug's an excellent teacher. We just had Sunday school at 9 o'clock every Sunday morning, and that is an excellent lesson. Um, Craig teaches us, and we've been learning about kind of the history of the Bible, and, and now we're learning about the history of Israel itself and, and how it, how, what's going on there now as well as what used to be in the history. Um, so that's really the only announcement is Tuesday and today. Um, we are going to have, there's another announcement, we are going to have a vacation Bible school. It's a two-day vacation Bible school, July 30th and 31st, and then we're hoping and praying for children to come. You can register your grandchildren or whoever. Um, there's a number on the um, screen, the, not the screen, the sign out front. Um, and so if you know children, please um, let them know or help them register for VBS. It'll be a lot of fun. And we just, I know we don't have children right here directly in our church, but we want to bring children in and offer them the love of Christ and, and share with them and help them on their faith journey. So as we have the light of Christ brought in, Heidi is going to sing us our prelude. Prepare our hearts for worship. everyone. Please rise if you're able and help us bring in the light of Christ. In a day when so many men are absent from families, we cherish the love of our fathers. Thank God for fathers who comfort and encourage. Thank you for fathers who are present, fathers who show up. Thank God for fathers who lovingly convince boys to become men. Thank God for fathers who build character and inspire us to greatness. Thank God for brave, for brave fathers who have the courage to resist being absent. Lord, Father's sake, may we encourage more men in our community. 
to be strong men of faith. Will you join me in the affirmation of faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of body and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Shall we join in the affirmation of, I mean, the, uh, the, the song of preparation, Here I Am, Lord. It's in your hymnal, 593. There are certain people in our bulletins whose names need to be raised in prayer. And there are some additional ones, additional ones that I have notice of. Jackie Campbell's family, the family of Ruth Ann 
Schaefer, Schaefer, and Kimberly Morrison. Uh, also, Jean Hardnell and Rachel Bryant. Are there any additional uh, names to be lifted today? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. We will keep them in, in our prayer, not only today, but always as well. Anything else? Does anyone else have a, an, up, an offer? If not, we will have a prayer. So we've heard the prayer concerns that have been mentioned, um, and I did not get to go see Carol this week, um, but I did speak with her, so she's continuing to work hard at, at um, therapy, so continue to keep her in our prayers. <clears throat> the prayers that we have on our heart, we lift them up also to the Lord. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this place where we can gather to worship you, to sing praises to you, and to lift our concerns to you. You already know what is on our heart. You know our concerns, even before we give words to them. But it's important for us to say them too. So right now, in our hearts and in our minds, we lift up any other prayer concerns that we might have on our heart that we haven't said out loud. You know those of us who are suffering from pain or from loss, those of us who have loved ones who are suffering, we especially lift them up. Any among us who have family who are traveling, put a blanket of protection around them, hold them tight, and give them safe passage wherever they are. Please, God, hear our prayers and give us peace knowing that you've got them taken care of. We know that we can come to you with any of our concerns, and we do. But sometimes we think we can handle things on our own, so please gently remind us that we can't, that we need to turn to you and give them over to you. We ask these and all things in the name of your precious Son, who when he was with us, he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. See if this one's working. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I am worn, 
Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows dreary, Precious Lord, linger near, and life is almost gone. Hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand, lest I fall, take my hand. Precious Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone, at the river I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am warm. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take Precious Lord, lead me Amen. Thank you, Larry. Always, always a treat, always a gift to have have our people come and sing. Scripture verses from this morning come from several places, well, two places. <clears throat> Proverbs 4, 1 through 4 says, My sons, listen to a father's teaching. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you good advice. So don't turn away from what I teach you. I too was once a young boy in my father's house and my mother loved me deeply. Then my father taught me. He said to me, take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. And from Proverbs 4, 10 through 15, it says, he kind of repeats these words. I think they're really important because he keeps saying them. My son, listen accept what I say. Then you will live for many years. I instruct you in the way of wisdom. I lead you along straight paths. When you walk, nothing will slow you down. When you run, you won't trip and fall. Kind of sounds like another verse in the Bible, doesn't it? Hold on to my teaching and don't let it go. Guard it well because it is your life. Don't take the path of evil people. Don't live the way sinners do. Stay away from their path and don't travel on it. Turn away from it and go on your way. And then in 20 and 27, it says, My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them in your heart. They are life to those who find them. They are health 
to a person's whole body. Move above everything else. Guard your heart. Everything you do comes from it. Don't speak with twisted words. Keep evil talk away from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Keep looking right in front of you and think carefully about the paths that your feet walk on. Always choose the right ways. Don't turn to the left or right. Keep your feet from the path of evil. In Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, it says, A huge cloud of witnesses is all around us. So let us throw off everything that stands in our way. Let us throw off any sin that holds on to us so tightly. And let us keep running the race marked out for us. Let us keep looking for Jesus. He is the one who started this journey of faith. And he is the one who completes the journey of faith. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. And as we think on these things, open our hearts and our minds to hear you. Amen. So we're going to see a little video right now. And while it's coming up, I want to say, because I haven't said it, and I'm sorry, happy Father's Day to all of you men. Happy Father's Day. I, I love that video. Um, my first class at seminary, I had to do a project, and there were certain subjects that we um, had to choose from. And the fatherlessness in America was one of the choices, and I chose that one. And so when I was searching for some resources and some information, that popped up on the internet. And I mean, I just fell in love with those two children. And I've watched some of their other videos about the tomb is not empty, or the tomb is empty, and, and just all kinds of other videos with their younger, their brand new younger brother too. But um, I think the message of that video is priceless. I think it's something we can all um, take in our heart and remember. Um, so that's what our message is about today, is, is Father's Day. Um, it's, it is Father's Day, and 
So we definitely want to wish all men, not just fathers, but all men, um, happy Father's Day. Uh, maybe you are fathers, and you have children or grandchildren of your own. Maybe you didn't have children, um, but you're a mentor to other children. Maybe you're an uncle or a scout leader or you were a teacher or in any capacity living the life you live as a godly man impacts people around you. So maybe you were able to bless children in your life by, by just living and being that good neighbor or that, that father figure by being a godly man. You can be a positive influence on those around you. We all have a father. We were born with a mother and a father. Whether they were present for the long haul or not, we began with two parents. Some fathers are good, kind, loving dads, setting a solid example for their children to learn from, to live by. They probably developed a strong bond with their children, one that lasts forever, even beyond loss, even from the grave. You still have that relationship. I know my children had that kind of relationship with their dad, with my husband, and they still have that bond with him. It continues even though he's gone, and I love watching my children bless my grandchildren with that same kind of love and nurturing that they got. Some fathers are absent, not involved with their children's lives at all. And some live under the same roof with their children, but they are still absent. They're not there, really, just existing in the same place, but not involved with their children. It's so sad, but we probably all know some families where that exists. We can learn a lot from the fathers, the men in the Bible. Adam, of course, was the first father, and he strayed from God's example, and he ended up falling into sin and even suffered the pain and the loss when his son Cain murdered his other son Abel. Adam's experiences teach us about the consequences of sin and the necessity of obeying God's laws. God wants us to freely choose to obey him and to submit to his love. It's a choice we have to make. We cannot hide anything from God, and we're to take responsibility for our failures, our sins, as well as our successes. From Adam, we learn to take responsibility for our behavior. Noah was a righteous man, and he stands out as a man who looked to God in spite of the wickedness that was all around him in the world. We can learn from Noah how important it is to follow God's call, to obey what God tells us to do, even when it seems to go against everything the world is telling us. From Noah's life, we learn that God blesses those who are faithful and obey him. Can you imagine being told to build an ark, a boat, when it had never rained before and there's no water nearby? Can you imagine how much ridicule he must have gotten building this enormous vessel? But he kept doing it, didn't he? He was obedient. He had no clue what God was going to do, but he was obedient. Our faithfulness and devotion honors God. That's what we can learn from Noah. Remember when we learned about Abraham and Sarah, that God had promised Abraham that he would be a father to an entire nation. His descendants would number as many as the stars in the sky. That was pretty unbelievable too, wasn't it? Think about how long they had to wait to become parents because they were already old when they got that message, when they got that promise. Abraham was a hundred years old when Isaac was born. But Abraham can teach us about patience and perseverance, waiting faithfully on God's promises. We don't know much about Jesus' earthly father, Joseph. 
He was one of the most underrated fathers in the Bible. First, he found his fiancée pregnant with a wild story about how she became pregnant by God's Holy Spirit. And after a visit from the angels, he believed her, and he went to great lengths to protect her and baby Jesus. Joseph obviously taught Jesus the carpentry trade, and he loved and nurtured Jesus as he grew. Joseph was a righteous man, and Jesus learned honesty and kindness and strength from him. We can learn from Joseph that God honors men of integrity and rewards them richly with his trust. The most important father figure of the Bible is, of course, God, our Heavenly Father. He's the ultimate role model for all humans, not just men. We should strive to follow his lead. He sets the model, the standard that we are to measure him by, measure ourselves by. God's love and kindness, his patience, his forgiveness, his wisdom. It's impossible to live up to those standards. But God meant each of us, and he understands as much as we want to be good, we fail sometimes. The key is to strive to follow God's model. What we can all learn from God is that he is constant. God never changes, and we can depend on him. God is faithful, and we've all heard it said that God is love. Our Heavenly Father is an example for each of us to emulate. When we acknowledge that God is our Heavenly Father and our provider, and our protector, that we see everything in a no, whole new light, a new perspective, and it gives comfort to know that regardless of whether we had or didn't have an earthly father, that God, our heavenly father, is really all we need. On Wednesday evenings, I help lead a parenting group at my previous church, St. John's in Winter Haven. And we tackle various parenting challenges using resources like books written by Christian authors, the Bible, sometimes the internet. We get helpful answers and guidance. But one of the most valuable resources we have besides the Bible is sharing our experiences with each other. We have discovered that parents and families all deal with basically the same issues. And if someone is dealing with something right now, there is someone else who already dealt with it, and others are listening because they know their turn to confront that issue will come soon enough. Recently, we read and discussed a book named The Blessing by Christian authors John Trent, Gary Smalley, and John Trent's daughter, Carrie Trent Stageberg. And it talks about giving the gift of unconditional love and acceptance. That's what God gives us, and that's what we're to give each other. The book of Genesis emphasizes the blessing of a father to his sons. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all gave formal blessings to their children, and receiving a blessing if from one's father is a high honor, and losing that blessing is tantamount to a curse. An Old Testament blessing of a father to his sons included words of encouragement, details regarding each son's inheritance, prophetic words concerning the future. For example, Isaac's blessing on Jacob, which was really meant for Esau, the blessing he gave to Jacob was the earth's bounty and authority over his brother. And it also promised those who blessed Jacob would be blessed and those who cursed him would be cursed. The blessing we give today is no less important. Giving our children blessings, giving children to anyone, giving blessings to anyone we have a relationship with involves several elements. <clears throat> the first one is, or one of them is, <clears throat> appropriate, meaningful touch. Excuse me one sec. Water is supposed to quench your thirst, but I think it makes me more thirsty and dries my mouth, so I'm going to try this. 
but appropriate, meaningful touch. Touch is such a basic human need. We all need to be touched. Making sure that we give positive touches, like hugs and kisses, gentle, loving touches to those we care about. It is vital to the healthy relationship. In today's world, we read all too often about children who receive inappropriate touches. They are hit, they are beat, they are abused, or totally neglected. Even the absence of meaningful touch is damaging to healthy development. Now that COVID is pretty much over, let's get back to hugging again, okay? It doesn't matter what age we are, people need human touch. I grew up in a time, or maybe it was just my family, that didn't hug very much. I didn't get many positive, loving touches. But as an adult, I hug. And I think I told you about working with the homeless after I retired from teaching. And I realized that in working with them and watching, they don't really get touched at all. When they would come into the mission for a meal or to, to talk with me about what their needs were, because I was the intake um, volunteer, and I talked with every single one of them, I realized that, that they need touch just as much as I do, just as much as we all do. And as I got to know them and they got to know me, when I was praying with them or when I was talking to them, I would just put my fingers lightly on their arm or their hand or their knee. And it seemed to just connect us even more. And then it led to me being able to hug them. And most of them welcomed hugs. And you got to learn which ones just wanted a little side pat on their shoulder and which ones wanted a full-blown hug. It's so important to be touched. Touch each other. Another important element is the spoken or written affirmation. To hear positive words spoken about oneself is powerful. To be told how special we are and to have specific encouraging words said over us builds us up, gives us courage, gives us confidence. It's even better when we receive written words. Written words of affirmation. You, know, you all know how special it is to get a letter in the mail or even a note left at the dinner table telling about special things that the sender says about you. Saying, saying nice things is great, but writing them down is so lasting. It can last forever and be read over and over, bringing love to the reader again and again. Letters that I've, I've received from my family especially on my walk to Emmaus, the letters that I've received from family and friends, they're tucked away safely in my home safe. They're precious words that lift my spirits, and just knowing that they're there, they remind me of who I am and how deeply loved I am. Another one is attaching high value. Using word pictures to describe and to give praise to your loved ones. I guess this could be kind of like putting a label on someone, but it must be an uplifting and positive label or title. I'm sure we can each recall some of the words or titles that we might have been labeled with as children. Some of those labels we didn't want attached to ourselves. In my family, among other names, I was called the unconscious one or the forgetful one because every time I was asked to get something from the basement, and my mother would say, what are you gonna go down there for? And I would repeat it. I'd get down to the basement and I would stand there in front of the shelves, because that's where we kept all of our, our food and our produce, and I would stand there thinking, what am I here for? What am I supposed to get? And after a few minutes, my mother would holler down the, the basement steps, Jeannie, what are you getting? Did you forget? Then she would tell me what it was, and I would trape up the stairs and give it to her. But after a while of being called that, I lived up to that. It was just like, well, nobody expected me to remember, so why try? So we live up to some of those negative labels that we have. So we want to make sure that we, we put positive titles, positive words, paint 
positive word pictures. Early one school year, when I was teaching kindergarten, a parent came in for a conference, and she asked how her child, Danny, was doing. And I said, great, um, he's kind, he's well-behaved, he's, he diligently does his work, um, he's learning. You know, I would send home things to let them know, but this mom wanted to talk to me about it. Um, I told her she, he shares with, with others, and he's very cooperative. And she cried as I was telling her this. And she said she was so relieved that he was, he was doing that. And I asked her, why was she worried? And she proceeded to tell me that at his preschool, there were two boys named Danny. And the other Danny was known as the good Danny. And her Danny was known as the bad Danny. And that was his label. The damage that we inadvertently do to children, but the damage that we do by labeling them for some minute behavior, that he might have misbehaved one day, and from then on he was known as the bad Danny. I remembered after she told me that, that his preschool director, um, I knew socially, and she knew that two of the Dannys, the two Dannys were coming to our school, and she wanted to know which Danny I got. And I told her his last name, um, and she said, oh, um, that's, I didn't want you to get that one, I wanted you to get the other one. And I stopped her conversation right there, because I didn't want her to tell me anything about the Dannys. I didn't want to know why she wanted me to get the other Danny, who was obviously the, the good Danny. Um, because my Danny in my kindergarten classroom was great. He was precious. And as all children, every now and then he would misbehave. But he always was apologetic. He was kind. And you know you can overcome anything if you have a kind heart. And he was kind. So I was glad that I got the Danny that I was given. We need to be very intentional about giving positive word pictures. For the rest of that school year, I began to praise Danny with examples that he could understand and relate to, trying to erase anything that he had felt about himself from the previous year. For his kindness and his helpfulness, I would say things like, Danny, you are a hero just like Superman when you helped your friend. And when he was he has worked hard uh, with something, I would say, Danny, you worked just as hard as Luke Skywalker when you studied that lesson and you tried your very best. These were word pictures that he could relate to, that he could live up to and continue to be kind and, and helpful to his friends because he wanted to be like Spider-Man. And he could study hard and learn hard things like Luke Skywalker from Star Wars, because those were characters that he could see in his mind, and he wanted to, to be like them. He wanted to emulate them. So I hope that that year he spent with me kind of undid the, the previous year, because he knew he probably heard himself being referred to as the bad Danny, but he was the good, kind, Superman Danny. We also need to picture a special future for the loved ones in our life, for our children. And this doesn't mean choosing their future for their career or their job or what they will achieve. I know when I hold my grandchildren, just as when I held my own children, I bless them, even as brand new infants, and even now as they're growing. I tell them how much they are loved not only by me and their parents and their siblings, but I tell them how much God loves them and how he will guide their steps as they grow. I don't say you're going to grow up to be a great doctor or a great teacher or a great whatever, fill in the blank. I don't want to put my expectations of a specific career choice. I just tell them that God has plans for their life 
that he has something special in their future. Other than to say, God has them in their hands, and he will always be with them and guide them. That's what I try. We also need to give a genuine commitment. A commitment means just be there. Show up. When someone you care about, someone you love, is appearing in a play or a game or whatever, just show up. I can't count the number of soccer games and dance recitals and school plays and all those things that we attended for our children. And now, I'm doing the same thing for my grandchildren. Even though attending those things involves a long car ride or an airplane trip to North Georgia. As you all well know, I make time for that. And you all are blessing me by allowing me to go and be there, to show up for my grandchildren. I end up getting blessed back just as I have my whole life. I remember so many times when I was teaching that my class would be singing or, or putting on a little skit for a PTA meeting or a, the spring performances. Many of the parents came to watch their children. And that's what we do, isn't it? That's what we do. We show up. Well, not all parents. There were always those children in my class whose parents just dropped them off at the sidewalk. And I would meet them to get them into the right room to get dressed or to get ready for their performance. And so many children got dropped off. And I'd watch their parents' car drive out of the parking lot. My family, even after my children were out of elementary school, my children would come to every performance with us, with my husband and I. And we would cheer for them. And after the performance, we would hug them and say, what a great job they did just as we waited for their parents to come back and pick them up. My heart broke for those little five-year-old children who no one showed up for. Many Saturdays and weekdays, evenings, even after my children were done playing ball with youth sports, my husband and I would be at the ballpark to watch my students play baseball or play soccer. And sometimes, as painful as it was to attend dance recitals, when we literally sat there for an hour and a half so we could watch a minute and a half where my student just stood there in fear, but we showed up. We were there. For those children, even when their parents were there, it was a golden moment for them, for me to show up. For weeks, they would talk about how I came to their game or their dance recital or whatever, whatever they were in, a swim meet or whatever. I showed up, and that was priceless. It gave them a blessing. But again, in reality, I was blessed. I continued to follow some of my children after they left my kindergarten classroom, and I would go to their, their little softball games or their baseball games or soccer games. And I, because I, I drew, um, I drew a, a blessing from that, but I, I've had a relationship with the children and their families. And to me, it was important to continue to watch those children grow, to continue to be a part of their lives, even into high school. We can give blessings to anyone, not just children. And we should give blessings to everyone, our spouses, our parents, our friends, anyone in our sphere of influence. The important elements of giving a blessing, and I'm gonna go over those again, a positive, meaningful touch, spoken or written words of affirmation, attaching a high value. And sometimes that's a hard one, to think of something that the person who will hear it can relate to, something in their life that they, they can hang on to, that they know that they are like that. Picturing a special future for that person and a genuine commitment to show up, to be there for that person. At our age, we probably don't have to show up to too many performances or ball games, but we show up when we know somebody just needs somebody to sit with them. Or we show up 
and share a meal or a snack with someone. Just sit and be. Just show up. And that shows love. Let's make a commitment to bring these five elements into our relationships, to honor our loved ones with those elements of the blessing, to build people up with sincere words of love and blessing. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your words and for always showing up for us, for always being there and for helping us be there and show up for each other, for giving us a nudge, a message in our heart to show up for someone who needs us. Help us to recognize those nudges and those messages that you put on our hearts. Help us to show up. Amen. Howdy, folks. Um, I'm going to be playing uh, an ocarina for you. I'm going to describe it. Um, this is a Zelda special edition ocarina. Um, it's called a sweet potato ocarina because it's shaped like a sweet potato. Um, the ocarina was originally fabricated in uh, Italy in the uh, 1850s. And um, so there are a variety of types of ocarina. they are linear ocarinas. Um, again, they're endless, um, you know, different forms and shapes and everything. Sounds a little bit like a recorder. Um, and before I um, play this, I'm going to play How Firm a Foundation, I want to uh, preface my playing by reading Psalm 150. It's the last psalm in the book of Psalms. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his mighty firmament. Praise God for his mighty deeds. Praise God for his exceeding greatness. Praise God with trumpet sound. Praise God with lute and harp. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with strings and pipe. Praise God with sounding cymbals. Praise God with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
Well, again, happy Father's Day to all the fathers, but really to all the men out there, because you are, maybe without even knowing it, you are all father figures to children and to people who watch you. So as we go out this week, may the God of love and the love of God, the God of peace and the peace of God, and the God of grace and the grace of God be with each one of us as we continue to grow into the likeness of Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. You too. Have a great week. Thank you.